everyone. My name is James Serra, and today we're going to talk about Microsoft Fabric, in particular, Lake House versus Warehouse. A little bit about me. I worked for Microsoft for most of the past nine years. I have a long career in IT, and I spend a lot of it recently talking with customers about data architectures, and in particular, the we look at data fabric, data lake house, data mesh, and the modern data warehouse, of which I have an upcoming book. So a quick plug, first five chapters are available. Uh, you'll see about two chapters a month come out on that. And by the end of the year, the book should be completely done and available for a print if you so choose. And earlier before that will be for ebook. Today, there's a lot of confusion when you look at fabric with do I use a lake house? Do I use a warehouse? Do I use both? So I'm going to try to clear up some of that confusion today in, in a short video. I've talked about Microsoft Fabric in my prior video on YouTube that went and spent an hour with an introduction on it. And that one subsection in there on data lake house versus warehouse is what I wanted to dive in more today. And I wanted to start by briefly covering what is a lake house on that? And pulling a few points of emphasis on particular features of a lake house in there. Think of a lake house as that center of the universe where I can pull data from other shortcuts, which we'll talk about, shortcuts to data that resides in other data lakes or another part, other lake houses. I, and I can pull that data in from there. I can also pull in data that's structured on unstructured using within fabric pipelines and data flows or externally using data factory that can land data in a lake house. Once it's landed in there, I can transform that data. And this is where it differentiates, which we'll get into is when I want to write to the lake house, I will transform data using Spark notebooks. I can also use data flows for that. Once that data is transformed, lands back in the lake house, then I can expose it using Power BI, or I can copy it to a lake warehouse. The structure of data in a lake house, if we look at the bottom left here, you have one lake, which is a pre-built large data lake within Fabric. Within that, you'll have workspaces, multi one, one in a multiple more workspace. And within each, within each workspace, you can have one or more lake houses in there. And you could take the links to that lake house and use them outside of the fabric, like an SSMS. And that's what those links demonstrate on the bottom left, what that would look like. Within a lake house, we have what's called a lake house mode. <clears throat> and within a lake house mode, you'll see in the demo, you have a lake house explorer and you have two sections in there to be aware of. You have the file section where I can upload any data and it'll land just as is. I could be CSV parquet files. It could be media files, video files could all go in there. Any file that's uploaded, that is a table. If it's parquet, it'll automatically be discovered by Fabric and will copy it into the table section, which is underneath the covers parquet, delta format on there. Files that doesn't automatically recognize that you can right click it and say load it to the warehouse or you could load it to the tables or you can drag it over there. Right now just parquet support is just supported, but down the road you'll see things like CSV supported on that. So what does that look like? So if we go into the demo, you will see I have a lake house that's previously set up here. And this is where Explorer pops up. Now, so here's, we have this file section, right click, I can upload files. They could be local files and I could simply pull them into here. I can also use a new thing, which is called the One Lake Explorer. And this is a add-on to Windows Explorer, then you can download this add-on and you'll see it appear in your task, task area there. And that allows me to interface with it directly. So you can see here I'm under a workspace and I can copy files, upload them this way or download files on that. Once those files are uploaded, as I said, you can 
in some cases, it'll automatically notice that it's a, a table and move it to there, or you can right click it and say load the tables. And what will happen then is say I uploaded this Australian file on here. It'll, if I want to make that appear, I can say load the tables. I'll just, I'll just call it, I'll create, let it create a new table on there. And it, it allows me to, to do some information to further understand what it is, and then it's going to put it in the table section in there. So the whole idea is to make this real easy for the average end user who's not technically inclined to upload data here and quickly view inside of that file. So if I jump into a, a file that I previously uploaded, this could be a, a, a dimension employee here, and you, we can see everything that's been uploaded within that file in there because it automatically recognizes the table. So behind the scenes, this is a Delta file in there. So if I come up here and I look at view files, you can see it, Parquet, and there's a Delta log in there. Hidden from the end user, unless they want to go look at it, because they don't, they shouldn't really care what format it's in there. But it is all Delta format in there. Now, once I, so that now I'm in the mounted section. So where I can go from here, if we look to the SQL endpoint mode, and that is where I can switch, and that's it's sort of an add-on which gives you additional capabilities to look into that file and to transform that file. So you have the visual query, and then you have a SQL query on that. So if I go and look at that in the demo, on this top right-hand side here is where I see the option to drop down and choose SQL endpoint. Once I do that, it jumps into this new workspace area on that, and gives me this additional functionality on there. So it'll pull in all those, pull in a, a view of all those tables in there, in the manage section on here. And then for many of these tables, I can right click and I can say, well, I want to use T-SQL on that. And so it, right, it jumps into a, a, a SQL where I can and then go and add and I can type in where clauses and, and whatnot on here to use T-SQL to see through it, to see what's in there. So it depends on what the end user is comfortable with. If they're comfortable with T-SQL, they'd want to use this. If they want to transform that data, they could, or visualize it in a certain way, they could also use the visual query option on here. And this is what's called Dataflow Gen 2 within Fabric, but this is Power Query on that. So I can drag a file, a table, that I need to cover is the Parquet file in Delta format in here. And now I can start transforming that. And you can use, if you're familiar with Power Query, I can use all these capabilities in here to do a lot of different things with this data. So it's a visual interface to make it real easy for the end user to get value uh, out of this data. And once they, let me go back to that, once they go and transform this data, and here they can either download the Excel file or they can go right into visual results, which will open up Power BI and take that transformed data, create a data set, and then build a Power BI report from that. So the whole idea is no code on here. I can go and do all these creations on here without having to get into any sort of code. We also have the capability on here to model the data. So in here, if I upload a bunch of files, convert them to tables, and in this Example, I have some fact a fact table with dimension tables. I could then create the relationships to that simply by dragging one field over to the other, and then I fill all that in there, and then I will get a relationship tag to that. And this allows me to do what normally I could always do, and there's a little bit of bugs going on there, and and because Fabric is still in public preview, this allows me to do things that. Previously, we were just in the desktop. So it can't do everything in Power BI desktop, but it can do a number of different things that can possibly make it that you don't need to do to build reports within Power BI desktop and that. So this is a short and sweet of what a lake house is. Now, a lake house can also create shortcuts within here. So I can create shortcuts to other lake houses, and I can also create shut shortcuts to a data warehouse. So the way to do that, if I go back to the lake house mode on here, is I simply right click table section and you will see the options here. I can click to another item in a fabric 
or I can connect to an external Data Lake Store Gen 2 account or Amazon S3 and later Google and others you'll see down here. So if I say I want to connect to Fabric, I can go in here and I can choose something within this workspace or with outside of it here. So you can see that it lists the type on here and then it lists the location, other workspaces in there. And then I can simply pick one on here and then it'll ask me what table I want to connect to. And, and I'm off and running on that. So I can do that to lake houses and warehouses. And if we see in here, I've connected to two previous. One is a lake house here, and then one is a warehouse here. And to the end user, they don't even know, they don't care that this is not actually located inside of a lake house. This is shortcut links to a bunch of others on there. So your warehouse, this lake house becomes a logical center where all the data resides. Could be within one lake, it could be shortcuts outside of that. And, and so it becomes sort of like a lightweight virtualization layer uh, uh, that, that eventually will be expanded to, to have shortcuts to other sources on that. So this is this is really convenient and all you can do everything within this table section in here. OK, jumping to so that's a, a quick and, and there, it's an overview of lake houses. Now data warehouses. Again, they can be the center of universe, just like lake houses on there. I can pull data in the air, structured and unstructured, land it into the warehouse as structured using the pipelines and data flows, just like in lake house. I can also have shortcuts that are mounts to other data warehouses. Eventually, this could be something like a dedicated pool on there where you can copy the data over into the data warehouse in there. But for now, there are no shortcuts. It's just structured and, and unstructured data. Once it lands in the warehouse, I can transform that. And there's the difference between lake house. Lake house, you do it with Spark notebooks to write data to it. With the warehouse, you're going to use T-SQL stored procedures or just T-SQL in an editor. It could be SSMS too. And I'm going to write data into that, which can then be consumed through Power BI, or I can copy it to another warehouse. So a Synapse data warehouse, and they, they use the term Synapse to make people aware this is like the serverless version of data warehouse within Synapse. It has true separation of the relational engine and the storage format. The storage format, even though it's a warehouse, is not stored in relational storage, it's stored in Delta Lake format, just like things in the lake house in there. And it's a lot easier to use than the dedicated pools and synapse because of the minimal knobs on there. Everything is auto optimized and auto integrated on there. So we made it, Microsoft's made it much easier. And that relational engine can have performance just as good, if not better, than the serverless on that. This is something I'll flush out more later, but there is no dedicated pool. It's all using a universal compute on there. If you look at fabric capacity, it's just pulling from that. So you don't have to worry about things like DWU anymore. So uh, a lot more that can go into this, but at the high level, think of it as totally serverless and a true separation of the storage with the compute and that I can fire up multiple computes that can all point to the same warehouse file in there. Unlike dedicated pool, which was a one to one relationship between the dedicated pool and the relational storage, this is the ability to have much higher concurrency because a lot of, I can have various compute that can be in different workspaces that are all pointing to that same warehouse file. A couple other things to note of warehouses, it has the support for th three part naming. So I can have data that's in separate warehouses or separate data, other data lakes that could be within the where with my workspace or outside of that, which I'll get to in a minute, but I can all reference them within one query. So this allows you to join data and multiple warehouses and multiple data lakes all within the same query. So a very powerful feature. And they just introduced cloning. So now I can go in there and I can clone tables just at the table label and eventually be at the, the warehouse label, but I can take that clone of it and behind the scenes, it's it's not copying the full data. It's just copying the link to it and then it'll keep track of what's changed. So the clone, once you've cloned it, 
it's it's its own separate identity. Meaning, if I change something in clone, it doesn't change the original, and vice versa in there. But this makes it a lot easier, especially for doing things like dev test environments on there. So definitely check out the cloning feature that just came out a few weeks ago. The data warehouse at, right out of the box can query the lake house tables like I was mentioning, and, and there's nothing more you have to do to that. It, it's just go into the query window, window and use three-part naming. The first part being the workspace on there and then the lake house that you're pulling it from, and, and that's all you need to do. So lake house versus warehouse on that. So let me, before I jump to that, so that I just give you an overview. If I go into my warehouse on here, you will see this looks just like the lake house SQL endpoint mode. They're very similar and not the way they look, but the way they operate on here. So you can see everything that I just showed you in a lake house can be in, in the warehouse. And there, oops, let me, let me go back to this and show you if I pull out something that you'll see on here, I have the SQL endpoint and the lake house on that. So those are the lake house related on there. I also have a warehouse in, in particular here. And I, let me jump to that so you will see it looks very much like the the lake, the SQL endpoint of the lake house on there. And I can have the same op options in there. I can I can write a SQL query on there. I can model it. I can use a visual query, all the same things on there. So if we look at the difference between the two at a very high level, this is one way of, of thinking through it. If I'm a data engineer, which is a option you select on the bottom left of your fabric on there, you select a particular profile. Data engineer is somebody that wants to use Spark notebooks. I can use Python, R, and Scala. I can use Spark SQL inside of that. Within the notebooks, I can write data to the lake house tables. In addition to Spark notebooks, I can use data pipelines, the copy activity or data flow, Gen 2, which is Power Query, to write data in there. On the other end, if I am a data warehousing person, I select that persona, I'm somebody who wants to use the SQL engine, meaning I want to use T-SQL to write data in there instead of Spark notebooks. I want to write store procedures to update the, and write to the data on there. I want to have full SQL, SQL support, which is not there yet, which I'll, I'll show in the next slide. But the idea is I, I want to stay to that world in there. And I could do that within Fabric, or I can use the link to that one lake to use tools like SSMS or Data Studio to, to do my store procedures and, and SQL writing on there. Again, I can use pipelines and, and Dataflow Gen 2 in there, but this is the big difference. Spark Engine is for writing data to Lake House. SQL Engine is for writing data into the warehouse tables on there. Now they can both read from each other, but it's important to note it really comes down to how do you want to write? And that's going to determine whether it's a Lake House or a warehouse. Now I put an asterisk on there because not all the T-SQL support is there yet. So here's the things that are not in there yet. And this gets into more of a challenge doing these commands within Delta Lake, because remember underneath the covers, no relational storage, there's all Delta Lake on there. So Microsoft is working on adding full support for this, and that's where that link on here is to go to get the latest updates. There's also a link to the documentation that gives a difference between Warehouse, Lake House, and Power BI Data Mart, which I won't go into, but this is a good overview to show you the differences in there. And I'll point out a few of these major differences on here. And this all gets down to like, why not just have two, why have two options? Why not just have one? The reason is because of Delta Lake's shortcomings. One of there is it doesn't support multi-table transactions. So that's pointed out in this table, this is the biggest one. If I wanna do a begin transaction, update a bunch of tables, which are files, Delta files, and then an end transaction, if I need that support, I have to use a warehouse in there. It does, it does not do that in Lake House. While Lake House has asset support, so transactional support, that's only for one table on that, not multiple tables. So that could be right there, a showstopper on whether you want to use warehouse, Lake House or warehouse, right? It's got to be warehouse. Also, Delta Lake, 
You can't update it with T data with T-SQL, which it went through, and there's limited T-SQL support for reads on that. So that was where I just showed you in the previous example in there. If I'm in a lake house, I'm using Spark SQL on that. And within the warehouse, I'm using T-SQL in there. So if I want that full T-SQL experience, I want to use a warehouse. There's also performance issues with lake house with what's called trickle transactions, which, which basically means if I want to do updates on just one record or a very limited amount of records on there, I may have performance struggles using lake house. And if I'm doing a lot of that, I may want to use warehouse instead. And then finally, a warehouse has schema support and a lake house does not. And that's what's pointed out right here. So if I want to if I like schemas and want to organize them that, that way, then I'm going to want to use warehouse. So those are four reasons. Now, maybe one day Delta Lake supports all of that and Microsoft can create one platform for doing everything. But until that happens, if ever, this is the separation that requires Microsoft to have a warehouse. And warehouse behind the scenes is using a SQL engine. So it's very powerful. It's been around for many years supports things like multiple table transactions where lake house is using the spark engine which doesn't support those kind of things now when it comes to within the demo i showed you and i'm using warehouse or lake house endpoints so warehouse is is sql endpoints and the lake house is sql endpoints but it has a lake house mode but if i go to that sql endpoint mode those operate the same whether you're working on a warehouse or a lake house now, how do those operate? There's four scenarios on there. If I'm in a warehouse or that lake, lake house SQL endpoint, and I'm going against a warehouse that is in the same workspace, I could read and write. There's no short course needed in there. I can go, essentially, it doesn't even know if you're in a warehouse or a lake house SQL endpoint. It, it sees it as all the same. It's one T SQL endpoint. And through that, I can go and do those inserts and updates and deletes in there. I can read from them. And, and that is everything you need is all right there. It makes it very simple. Now, if I want to use a warehouse in a different workspace, I would have to create a shortcut to that. Once I create a shortcut to that, I can only read from it. So I can't do inserts, updates, or deletes to a warehouse that I have a shortcut to. The reason I'm using lake house, do you say like, well, wait a minute, if I'm in, if I, why can't I just create a, a shortcut in the warehouse to go to another warehouse? Because warehouse doesn't support shortcuts in there. So I have to go to lake house, create that shortcut. But remember I said warehouse can read lake houses. So that's kind of a, a workaround in a way for a warehouse to be able to read lake houses that are outside its workspace and one little caveat is if i have a shortcut to a warehouse that's and you know, i'm doing answers to that no problem i can see those if i do updates and deletes to that warehouse the shortcut will not see that yet so that's coming down the road so be aware if i create that warehouse shortcut to a, another warehouse in a different workspace and I'm updating that warehouse and I go, well, wait a minute, I'm doing updates, I don't see it. That's because that feature is not there yet. Now, we also have the third scenario, a lake house in the same workspace, right? If I'm in warehouse or lake house SQL endpoint mode, I could use three part naming conventions. I can read the data on there. I don't need a shortcut. I can't write to the data because only Spark engine. And, and when I'm in the SQL endpoint, I'm in the SQL engine, right? That, that, so that has the limitation there. If a lake house is in a different workspace, I can create a shortcut to it within the lake house, and then I can read it. So I can, and this gets into data lake design, where I can decide I want to have lake house for my bronze layer, silver, and gold. And generally, you create those and separate lake houses and do shortcuts to them because of a limitation right now within 
and I'll go to the demo to make this more obvious, a limitation within the lake house here is I have tables, but I cannot have folders in here. I can put folders in the file section, but I can't do it in the table section. So I can't have a folder that's bronze, silver, and gold. So instead of having one folder, in essence, that has everything in there, I can create separate lake houses for them and link to them for shortcuts, right? So uh, important point. Now let's jump into another visual way of, of thinking about using a Spark engine, a Spark notebook, or a SQL engine, which could be within Fabric or something like SMS. If I'm in the lake house, I tried to make this easy to understand, I could use the Spark engine within a Spark notebook. And if I'm doing that, I could read and write to a lake house, which behind the scenes stores in Delta format. If I'm in a warehouse, I'm going through a SQL endpoint. I can use this engine to read and write into a warehouse table with this in Delta format. Within, within the Spark engine, I can create a shortcut. This is within the notebook to a warehouse table, and I could read from that. That's what that's showing. Because the data in a lake house is, the metadata is automatically synced to a warehouse, just like it is in Synapse, within the warehouse, I can read from the lake house without having to create a shortcut, right? Now, this is all within the same workspace. As in the previous example, if I'm outside of that, then I have to start creating shortcuts. But this is a simpler approach. If you're all within a workspace, SQL Engine can read data right from a lake house, all right? So that's a visual way that I've tried to create to make it simpler to understand. Now, a couple other slides on here. If we think of a data lake design, I can have a medallion architecture and I could have within any layer, however I want to define it, I could decide I'm going to use Spark and write data into Delta Lake on there into a lake house. And that's what this symbol is, a lake house. A warehouse has this symbol and I could use T-SQL to write data into Delta Lake tables on here. I could read using T-SQL from both of those and decide I'm going to write that into another warehouse, right? So options here, I could also say, I'm gonna read from both of those from Spark and write it to a Spark table in here. So what this leads to is a fabric medallion architecture could look something like this. I can decide I have these on-prem and Cloud sources, I'm going to use Spark to ingest it into the raw layer. I could use Fabrics data flow if I wanted to, Gen 2. I can use the copy activity, or in this slide, I can just ingest it using Spark. And I would be in a Spark notebook on that. And that's going to land in the Delta format. We'll call that the Bronze Lake House. I can decide that I also want to use Spark to clean the data so I could go into a notebook, clean the data, write it out to the lake house and have that as my silver layer. I can then decide, you know what? A lot of my end users are familiar with T-SQL. They may want to have, they want to write to the T to, to data in the gold warehouse. I'm going to take a copy of that data in the lake house and I'm going to land it in a gold warehouse gold warehouse in there, which is going to use the Delta Lake underneath the covers, but it's going to be a warehouse and not a lake house on there. So this gives me a, one option for making that presentation layer. And you may ask from whoever wants to use this, what's your skill set? If, they, if they're all in T-SQL, those end users, you may want to put it in a warehouse layer. And for those other people who are probably in IT, and they want to clean that data and they're familiar with Spark, they can use Spark. So this is one option in there. I can have all three of these being lake houses. I can have all three of these being warehouses on there. The whole idea is you have this flexibility and ease of use because out before this with Synapse, I to go to that warehouse, I would have to copy that data into relational layer. And then I'm limited. 
because of relational storage, then I'm limited to having to use a dedicated pool. All that's gone. I'm using, there is no concept of pools here. I can just go into whatever lake house or a, and I'll go back to that, the demo. I can be with whatever tool I want to use. I can go in there and easily and quickly query data that is within a lake house, that's within a warehouse on there. It's the only one I want to write is when I got to think about it. All right. So hopefully that helped you to understand a little bit more about lake house versus warehouse on that. So it took me a while to figure this out. Hopefully these slides make it easier. If you have any questions on this, feel free to reach out to me. There's my email. I will have a post about this video and the deck on my blog that you can at jamesarrow.com. So thank you for your time. We'll have other videos down the road of, of fabric on here, but hopefully this will get you started in understanding Lake House versus Warehouse. Thanks so much.